not gonna lie, I was sitting here for like five or so minutes because I wanted to start filming and then uh, there is a funeral march outside so I don't want the music to be heard on camera but anyway hello friends welcome back to the channel if you're new here welcome my name is Trina and in today's video it is going to be kind of chaotic I guess but also quite fun I have been thinking about doing this video for like a couple of months now I've been planning on it and it is a 24 hour timer style reading vlog I wanted to do this sort of video for Halloween. I'm filming this in advance so that we could get it in time for Halloween season. So my reading list for today is going to be to read as much as I can the 12 books in the Fastbear Fright series. Um, they are all uh, short story collections, each having three stories that somehow ties in or references or maybe even give lore hints to the FNAF games and also the books. Um, not I don't know about the canonicity or whatever that is um, with the timelines and such. I'm not a 100% theorist, but I do enjoy listening to watching videos of theories of FNAF and I just wanted to like dive into the stories myself. So that is what we're going to do. Uh, within the 24 hour time period in my timer, I would like to read as much as I can of the 12 books. Each book, I said, having three stories and a bonus chapter at the very end, sort of like an end credit situation, wherein it's another story in it of itself, which I think is quite, it's quite, uh, what do you call this, a smart way of like getting people to buy or read more of a book series that is super long to have like that additional, more interesting or like uh, the probably the creepiest and also the more the most lore hinting story at the very end of each book like one chapter per book and it's like 12 chapters of all uh, to complete the stitch rate i believe is the main main antagonist of that but yeah anyway uh, i'm going to start with the very first one into the pit i have already um listened to a bunch of uh mad pats game theorists um talks referencing these books so probably the first three or four um of the fast bear fights books i have already known some of the stories in it but i would like to feel the scare for myself um as we always <laughs> i guess and yeah that is what we're going to do today i'm excited i want to see spooks for the halloween season it's storming outside it's super creepy it's super dark and we're just going to go with it super windy outside anyway it is the next day um, this reading log is starting out super super slow actually um, I only managed to finish reading like one fast bear fright books last night because I was super busy and I only have read for a little over three hours and with the pacing that I have um, right now I think that I only get to read one fast bear fright story per hour so it's three hours per book in my pacing as of the moment and yeah i only got to read one fast bear fright book last night into the pit and i recall listening to matt pat about these um his theories about these books and the stories i recalled from him so it was like a little bit spoilery already i already know the story of these first few stories um or like the uh, concepts of them so um let me just deal with this into the pit to be beautiful and count the ways so it's three stories and then the stitch rate additional chapter so i decided that all of the stitch rates chapter i will read once i finish all of the 12 um books basically and just read all of the stitch rate series uh, or chapters at the very end and so um 
I already said that this is going to be a spoilery sort of um, reading vlog because I don't know what um, what details I am going to say and not say because they're just short stories. But basically, um, I guess these stories tell about a little bit about the concepts of the universe of the games as well, but also have their own universe. So Into the Pit is the first of all of these stories wherein this kid um, who does not have um, their family, doesn't have a lot of money, so he had to spend his uh, summer vacation uh, going to the library and then going to this uh, pizzeria, or like a pizza place, I guess. And this pizza place has like this um, off-limits area wherein there is like materials or stuff from all the older pizzeria that it replaced and it was a ball pit and um ball pits are gross <laughs> if i'm being honest ball pits are gross but he ended up going there anyway and then somehow whenever he emerges from the ball pit it is a different year um so it's like the time traveling ball pit and uh stuff happened it's crazy stuff happened and the ending i guess it was creepy it was super creepy actually but yeah it is what it is and i enjoyed it to be beautiful it's kind of also creepy, but in a way, I'm kind of annoyed. This is about a girl who wanted to fit in, be uh, part of the popular crowd, the beautifuls, she calls them. And um, one day, she rescued this robot from the dumpster near her house. And the doll was like, I will grant you your wish to be beautiful. And every day when she wakes up from her sleep, um, a part of her... Um, becomes more beautiful um, like something that she actually is happy about but then the things go south from there and it's like super gory <laughs> in a way at the end there but it's fine um, I still feel creeped out about it but more annoyed at the main character who insists to be like this model like body um, her definition of beautiful even though she herself is already quite pretty but um, thinking about it, she's still like, I don't know, middle school or high school, I forgot. But um, she has room for growth, actually, before um, she could no longer um, have appearance changes or puberty. Um, yeah, so that's one. And then Count the Ways is like so much so the creepiest of them all. Um, but it's more of like, I'm annoyed again of the kid. Because I was 14 at one time as well, writing these cringy dark depressing like sad poetry and also um the feeling of like somebody lit up your world and suddenly write love poems as well so in a way um i cringe a bit but i also find it super sad um because she's realizing that this is not what she really wanted she's just going through a phase i guess and it's teenagers right and then i noticed that whenever like in this first book whenever they refer to something being heated in the microwave, they call it zapped. <laughs> like the term is zapped, zapped in the microwave or something. Um, and zap is also like another thing in like sister location, I believe, where in uh, they're zapping the animatronics. But anyway, I'm going to update. Um, the wind is getting super loud, it's super noisy. Um, but I'll update uh, when I finish the next book. First book I gave a uh, three star. Yeah, I'm going to update later. Well, I guess Doreen is joining me on this clip today. Um, hello, update. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a tiny, tiny haul as of the moment talking about what happened in between the stuff. And oh my god, it is super, super rainy. But any case, um, for one, I did manage to finish fingerless gloves. I actually did not film me making these, but um, it is like the perfect thing to do, I guess, in this like super stormy season. I noticed that um, my fingers are fine. It's just that my palm and like this part of my hand gets super painful whenever I think it's arthritis, basically. Um, so I decided to crochet myself counterintuitive because my fingers hurt and I still crochet, but whatever. I managed to finish fingerless gloves. Um, I forgot the name of the creator, but I do have the tutorial of it on YouTube. I will link it down in the description if you're interested in this. But uh, she made it using a bulkier yarn while I made it with a sock yarn or like a milk cotton sock yarn acrylic situation. And as you can see here, there is one strip here that's different color compared to the other hand. 
I ran out of yarn. I used one ball of the variegated white and blue yarn and I ran out. I still have another ball, but I don't want to crack open a new ball if I have like scrap yarn. So I decided to just uh, add the scrap yarn here. And th this is only something that I wear when during the night, if I feel cold, like if I'm going to sleep and I decided to do fingerless gloves so that I could still use my phone if ever I don't feel like sleeping yet. So yeah, fingerless gloves. And the color combination is a very cinnamon roll. I have my cinnamon uh, mofu sand here that my brother got me for my birthday, always there at the side. Um, and another thing of cinnamon roll is that my dad got me a little surprise. Um, it is way past my birthday already, but he gave me another surprise of a cinnamon roll. Uh, had it, I think it's from, I don't know where this is from, Japan or something? But it is a sort of like um, omamori, but also a cinnamon roll shaped daruma doll. It's super cute. It's 0.2 grams of gold. Yeah, it's gold. And it's super cute. It's an omamori charm with a daruma doll of cinnamon roll inside. And I really love this. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to like have a cinnamon roll uh, sort of shrine collection situation here, but that is like my current obsession. But anyway, um, back to what this video really is about. I am around, let's see here. I am around, I am around 14 hours and I'm trying my best not to be seen on the reflection. 14 hours and 26 minutes into this vlog. And I have finished actually two books since we last updated. So I finished Fetch as well as uh, 1.35 a.m. So hold on a sec. Here we are. I'm gonna move my cinnamon rolls to the side first. There, just a sneaky sneak. Um, let me adjust you. Here we go. So I finished Fetch and uh, 1.35 a.m. I actually started Fetch after I finished the first book and it was, uh, it was, it was so, it was kind of boring for me. Um, this is about a couple of kids breaking into the old pizzeria, finding this animatronic dog, and somehow it got, it synced, the system of the dog synced with the phone of one of the main characters, or the main character himself, and whatever he texts, like, the system of the dog, um, reads it and fetches it for him. Like, for example, he wants something, and then he finds that that item is already at his front porch like a delivery dog of some sort. Uh, and it goes downhill as all of these books or stories, as I've noticed, will go downhill from there. The second one is Lonely Freddy. I believe this is, it's not scary. It's super sad, actually, um, because uh, I think that the main character is starting to feel uh, like he could connect more with his sister um, because they are like, he's super jealous of his sister for being like the golden child and he's like the problematic child of the this couple. And I did, like think like why are these like adults horrible and why are there so many sibling um what do you call this so many sibling um arguments fighting uh within these books and i remembered what franchise i was reading but in any case i really like lonely freddy it's super sad um not scary at all however the last one uh out of stop is the scariest of them all imagine having this rejected toy that only runs um, like it's only moves during the night and then it is out to get you and you have a thunderstorm that has power out and you don't have batteries on your phone or a flashlight and it's out to get you super scary I think out of all of these um, this one is the most like um, what do you call this um, exciting of them um, this is super sad this is super boring this is exciting I gave the book a three star overall and then another three star is the next one it is a one uh, 1 35 a.m. Uh, I did hear about a theory of this that it was mentioned. I don't know if it's connected with a one of the sister location narratives, but it is about this woman who she's like divorced and trying to get herself um, where she belongs and trying to live her life situation. And uh, she found this doll at a garage sale and she looked at the doll and it was like, this is what I wanted my baby to look like. Like, she looks so much like the baby that I have always wanted. And so she bought the doll. It was an alarm clock in itself. And her 
like what do you call this her job was supposed to be at 1 35 p.m but the doll woke her up at 1 35 a.m and so she was late for that shift in the afternoon and what she did to the supposed doll that looked so much like her baby that she always wanted the first disappointment that she got she chucked her into the garbage dump which is so like you should not be a mother <laughs> if you're that way like one mistake of this supposed doll who is like oh this is the doll or like the, the daughter that i have never had always wanted her chucked in the garbage dump nope so yeah uh it's kind of sad actually as well uh room for one more is i really like minorinas i really like minorina dolls um from sister location i believe um and to be perfectly honest they are like super creepy um dolls that i could probably make with an archetype or like that doll that you use um, for your drawing figures. Um, I could probably make one for myself, but that's super creepy. So no thanks um, But yeah, uh, this is also a very super super duper sad story wherein our main character was going to be like will Try to improve himself after this breakup or was it breakup or divorce? No, it's either breakup or divorce at the situation He did not take care of himself and at the very end of the book He was going to try he was going to improve um, he was going to clean up his place, uh, his sister helped him, going to eat healthier, going to take care of himself, buy himself new clothes, and then suddenly, um, because he was like thick-headed and prideful as well, he started to feel different conditions in his body, but he did not want to go to the doctor because the doctor failed him um, at one point in his life, and he does not believe or like trust doctors anymore. But uh, yeah, it was super sad. He was going to... Um, help himself and take care of himself moving forward and then stuff happened and then it went downhill as always and then the last one uh the new kid um i also heard of this from MatPat, and so i was not surprised but this is like something of like part of it i don't know if i should mention this because it is like there is a scene in this whole story wherein it kind of tied to the lore that is in the games and yeah, it was super interesting, actually. This is the horror that we were looking for. Even though I gave it just two scares, I actually am rating that based on scares, like how creeped out I was after the books. Um, and sometimes if it's not scary, it's like other emotions that I rated it with. But two scares. It's fine. Um, but yeah, um, horrible adults plus horrible kids equals the FNAF series or franchise or whatever. But yeah, I'm still enjoying it. I am going to finish up the next one, which is... Uh, step closer i believe so far this is like the best set of stories like the next book the uh fourth one the step closer books i think i am enjoying more so it's improving like i believe my scoring of these books will also improve and i will update you more if i finish any of the books eventually she shortened it to a tree make me a tree Wanda would say occasionally after the kids were asleep on Friday nights. Some good old Chinese cough medicine hopefully will soothe the voice a bit and things aren't going too well. So yes, hello. Um, welcome back to another update, I guess. Um, yesterday or last night, I was able to go through a lot, like two books actually, um, since I last updated you. And I have been audiobooking some of them because I did, um, I actually forgot if I filmed any clips of me doing diamond painting. Um, the then painting set was a gift by my best friend for my birthday and I wanted to play around with it while I listened to the audiobook and yeah somehow I was thinking that maybe audiobooking can be a little bit of a cheaty cheat because I can listen to it at times two speed however um, I call this there are also cases wherein like this audiobook reader is more of a theorist rather than a an actual audiobook narrator so he inserts like side comments as well as like um, reacting to what he is reading and yeah I just found him on YouTube and to be perfectly honest I think that it is actually better <laughs> to just read it for yourself rather than audiobook it um, because um, my mind just blanks 
whenever I listen to the audiobook of like the Passport Fright series. So going back to the previous ones, I don't know if you have seen my reaction to the very last one. Um, it's so good, actually. It's just so good. Um, these two books are like probably my favorites. That's why I gave both of them four stars. So the first one being um, Step Closer is uh, number four, right? In the Passport Fright series, it is about this kid who wanted to like play a prank on his younger brother who he thinks is like super spoiled and in a way he was the one who uh has like so many unfortunate things happen to him um even though uh, his brother wants to uh bond with him to play with him and just be good brothers i guess and i kid you not after reading this book i did have a bad dream uh about a younger brother like I don't have younger brothers in real life uh, I am the youngest of two siblings and in my dream I had a younger brother and my younger brother in this dream actually like stabbed me in the eye which is a little bit of what happened in here in Step Closer so like okay the, the spooks are um, invading my dreams now but yeah uh, three scares for that the second one is dance with me this is more of like a Ballora story wherein this girl is a thief and it's like um she stole a pair of glasses um from a kid a kid's goodie bag wherein every time she wears the glasses she sees Ballora and Ballora just keeps on uh, getting closer to her every time she wears the glasses and it's like her darkness and her regrets she's like running away from her regrets and so yeah it wasn't that spooky but it was a good story wherein you can get second chances and something like that it's nice and then the last one coming home is probably sp spookiest and also sort of lore related but also super wholesome so this is about a um sister who her younger sister i believe was um kidnapped and killed and then um she could see the younger sister spirit and like she can't move on to the next life and yeah it was a wholesome spooky but wholesome story and i really enjoyed it that's why i gave this whole book for out of fan store uh the dance with me one isn't really my favorite but at least it's a good story um and then the other one that i finished reading the first one that i audiobooked um is bunny call and i don't really enjoy bunny call because like um I like I, I can't um, it wasn't that fun it was like a dad who doesn't want to participate in the activities of his family and so he wanted to play a practical joke called the money call to scare his family um, during their camping trip and then he realizes that oh this is a bad idea I should cancel it and then um, as soon as he cancel it the bunny is of course um, something spooky or um, what do you call that uh, murderous I guess so that's the first story. The second story and the third story, I actually decided to go back to reading it because I really would rather read something that is good or like read it uh, if the story is good. I mean, uh, In the Flesh is actually quite, yeah, it's super spooky. I really hate the main character of this and I'm kind of like laughing because the main character's name is Matt and I don't know if this is a nod or something, but yeah, he, Matt is 100% an asshole. I, he cannot be redeemed i guess and no redemption no nothing but there is quite lore related to this one especially with um this is the vr i guess um side of the stories or the games and then the last one uh, the man in room 1280 is also quite lore based and this is like one or like my most favorite out of all of the stories it's spooky it's creepy it's gross uh it's about a priest who was called in in order to like maybe um, do the final rites for this man who, who is not supposed to be alive, granted his condition. And all of the nurses are like, there is evil inside of this man that keeps him from going to the other life. Like, a um, very much vengeful spirit story. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's super scary. And, yeah, so much trigger warnings, I guess. But, yeah, so far, that is um, uh, the updates. I think with my pacing, I do have, like, 11 and a half hours left. We're midway through all of this. And I think I'm able to read probably three more books, if I'm being honest. Um, not sure though, but we'll see with the pacing. I am feeling quite ill and uh, I could just read all night long, if I'm perfectly honest, so that we can finish this vlog by Sunday, hopefully. Hello, I'm back and I decided to audiobook the heck out of uh, the next two books. I am currently, I did not bring my phone, where did I not bring my phone? So we are 3 hours and 14 minutes left of this reading vlog. 
Uh, and to be perfectly honest, I was super distracted yesterday as I was um, reading or listening through to the audiobooks. I audiobooked all of these actually, from Blackbird to The Real Jake to Hide and Seek. I did happen to have to like uh, read the ending of Hide and Seek because I did not understand uh, the story as it passed by me. Uh, it went over my head, literally. And then, of course, the clips, the breaking wheel, and he told me everything. Now, these sets of like stories, I believe, are more sciency. They're more sciency, child genius situation. Um, children having the ability to do science experiments and animatronic building, and so many horrible, horrible parents. Now, Blackbird, I don't really um, let's say it isn't my favorite, but it's more on like guilt and emotions and trying to redeem oneself with the mistakes from the past. The second one, the real Jake, is almost like a crying child story. Uh, I can't remember if it's like FNAF 4, but it's the one with the child in the bed, um, medical supplies everywhere sort of situation, that that game. Um, but it's, it's a nice story, but it's super, super sad. And then Hide and Seek is another like revenge, pride, sibling rivalry as always I'm, I'm getting pretty tired of like these concepts because i'm binge reading all of these stories like one after the other and like my brain's like nyeh, nyeh. i don't really um like find it entertaining anymore i want spooks i don't want like sibling rivalry and then next is the cliffs which is the seventh book of the series um this one is more psychological horror i guess with uh the main character being a dad single father and he bought the kid a uh, Freddy doll um, that helps, or was it a doll or was it? Yeah, it was a doll, I guess. Um, and it was meant to be a security, um, like alerts if, if the kid is um, in trouble or something. And then the kid got lost, or I don't know if it was lost, kidnapped or whatever. But the ending showed what actually really happened. And uh, it's not always like you have to antagonize these um, animatronics situation. The second book, uh, or story rather, of this book is The Breaking Wheel. Now this one is horrific. It's very brutal. And in a way, it's getting back on your bully. However, sometimes it's not, it doesn't go according to plan and it bites you in the back situation. And it's very brutal. Like, I really don't like the main character or like the kids in this because there's like, I don't like them. Um, they feel so highly, or think so highly of themselves situation because they're super smart, super genius kids. And then um, it feels like it feels like nothing, um, as if like, yeah, um, do whatever you want. I don't care. My my uh, invention is not going to break the situation. And yet, there's this other kid who has another problem. So yeah, breaking wheel is fine, but it's very brutal. Uh, and then he told me everything is another sciency thing. Uh, I don't know if this introduces what uh, the concept called fast Um I do. I have heard of this concept of like I think it's a material that's cloning kids. I don't know if this was introduced in the Stitch Rate chapters because I haven't read that yet. But this is like my first introduction to the fast group. So gross. <laughs> so super sciencey but also super gross. But yeah, um I decided to audiobook all of these. One, because I was crocheting. I know my best friend is not going to watch this because this is a horror vlog and so I'm able to like talk about the like her birthday's in December. It's October currently. And I just wanted to go right ahead and crochet two bandanas for her dogs. Um, she loves the color green, so I chose, this is picking up more teal than sage. It's actually sage green, I like the matcha, uh, no, this is the matcha one. Um, this is more sage green, supposedly, but it's picking up in the camera as teal. So that's kind of interesting. But in any case, um, I did finish these two while I was audiobooking, and I am planning on doing the bandana for her, for her birthday. So I was planning on doing a match, like, she has two dogs, right? So one is for her lighter colored dog, and the other one is for her darker colored dog. Um, and then I will make a um, bandana for her using these two colors, like a combination, and they could take cute pictures together. So I decided to do this early so that I'm able to like finish it up, wrap it for her whenever she comes to the city to visit. I could give it to her and tell her that um, do not open until your birthday, and of course Christmas for the other one. And I do have a bunch of other projects for Christmas that I am thinking about, like presents for my grandmother, as well as like decorations for the store. So yeah, uh, I do have a lot of crocheting to do uh, before the end of the year. So yeah, uh, I'm glad that 
uh, audiobooks are in the an option, I guess. But I think for the last one, for my last three hours of this vlog, I feel like I really need to read it rather than listen to it. Uh, I might listen to it still if I have like the urge to do more diamond painting because I'm almost halfway to the image and I'm super excited for that. Hello, so we are at the final update for this vlog. I really have to like finish this um, because I have stuff to do. But in any case, um, I have finished the eighth book and I, <laughs> I actually fell asleep at the very last story. Now, um, I did mention earlier that I did not want to like, oh, hold on a sec, I did not want to audiobook it, but I ended up audiobooking the last one because one, I was crocheting and the other one is that I actually listened to it as I was falling asleep. And I got through Gumdrop Angel while I was crocheting a bandana for Angel, um, my best friend. And this was spooky, but also like, I'm frustrated with this um, story, but also this is kind of gross. So um, the story is that there is this older sister who I think um, the mother um, married, remarried, and she now has a younger sister from the this new uh, father, a stepfather. So she has a step uh, sister, and what happened was that um, the stepsister is super spoiled, of course, the um, father was super rich, and she, um, I don't know, it's not jealous, but rather um, she wanted to like go to school, go to a proper school, and then um, do all these things that are actually um, good. However, I don't know why she's being deprived of these um, when like um, she wanted to go to school while the little sister wanted a horse. So, um, they, they gave the little sister what she wanted, but the older sister, she did not get what she wanted. So I don't know why. She's like the victim. Like the older sister is the victim in this case. And yet she is still the one who is punished because um, like this is truly a um, villain backstory type of situation. Like um, this is agony and also revenge plot. Like if the older sister uh, haunts them upon her death, like haunts this family upon their death, um, because she's so angry of this family, then they deserve it, really, seriously. Um, but yeah, uh, the second one, Sergio's Lucky Day, I really, really, really wanted to DNF the story. Like, as I was listening to the audiobook, the audiobook narrator, Ozone, was also, like, frustrated with the main character, Sergio, as well as Balloon Boy. I really don't like Balloon Boy from the get-go, like, before reading these stories. But it's, like, super frustrating. Like, it's frustrating to the point that it's stupid, but yeah. Um, not my favorite, uh, like five out of five frustration. And then the last one, um, my brain shut down with uh, listening to what we found. This is a story I had to go back. Like after, when I woke up um, this morning, I actually saw that my timer has run out and my phone was shut off and I actually finished the audiobook. However, nothing. I recalled nothing. So I had to go back and read the story. It was short, so it was fine. Um, a little bit over our 24 hours, um, but I had to know what um, the story was about. And this is like the Fazbear Frights. So FNAF 3? I don't know if it's 2 or 3. Which one is the Fazbear Frights um, one wherein they leaned pretty much into the scary factor of these um, animatronics and made it into a quite a decrepit um, haunted house situation. Um, they were making... Um, this restaurant and like bringing in all of the stuff that were from the pizzeria, the old pizzeria to this location wherein um, they are preparing to open this like uh, freaky haunted house um, style or haunted pizzeria style um, establishment and the main character is like the security guard for like the night shift. What ended up happening is that the main character is super traumatized. This is more of like psychological horror, a lot of trauma, PTSD and a lot of mental health issues when it comes to this main character and I feel super sorry for him actually as I was reading through the whole story but this is the spook that we really wanted we know that Five Nights at Freddy's is more like um, ghosts and also like vengeful spirits and like messing with your head situation this is the story that messes with one's head and I decided my, my voice is giving out I'm sorry um, I decided that I rate this book a 3 out of 5, and this is where we end our 24-hour reading vlog. Um, super okay with the results um, to be able to read 8 books in a span of 24 hours. 
which is good. I will continue with uh, the 9 to the 12 as well as the Stitch Rate book um, in my own time, I guess. I need a palette cleanser. Actually, after um, listening to these and reading all of these stories, because once I binge read this, I notice that I get more and more frustrated and more bored of the storyline. But still, it gave me the spooks that I wanted. I've always wanted to do this 24 hour reading vlog with the Fast Bear Frights books. And I'm pretty happy with it. And I hope you enjoyed as well. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today in this video. And I will see you in the next one. So until then, guys, take care and bye.